Hey everybody, Tyron Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this Friday. So, going to be going over the Saturday severe weather threat. Not much has really changed. The uh, hazard types we can now look at a little bit more. And then there's also the flood threat, which we've already been talking about. Not much has really changed with that. We're more or less just taking a look at the rundown that we have currently. Flood threat is shifting a little bit more towards the north right now. I'm not too sure if they're going to issue a moderate risk at this point. In fact, that's a, the best case scenario. I knew there was eventually going to be a slight risk issued with this, so there's no surprise in seeing that. Now, about 12 million people are impacted by this slight risk currently. So areas north of Atlanta towards Greenville, South Carolina, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Greensboro are under the gun here for an increased threat of flash flooding here so definitely make sure that you are staying on top of things in regards to that as far as our severe weather threat is concerned definitely starting to see more of a linear look here in regards to the hazard types alone the overview of this definitely kind of has the look of a squall line here just based off my experience keep in mind though there is a five percent tornado threat area here as well along with the 15 percent wind threat which is a little bit small and a little further off to the south here where we have just a little bit more instability available not very much though there is also interestingly enough a five percent hail threat that has popped up here with this storm system it's going to be right along that frontal boundary itself we could see some hail greater than about greater than probably a inch in diameter here i wouldn't expect too much to really go beyond that point but then again keep in mind this is the weather we're talking about but that being said we're going to go ahead and take a look again at the kinematics here for the setup for saturday and the progression of the uh trough here in this low that's going to develop has definitely shifted a bit here so the time frame has definitely changed for sure so overall here here's where that low really starts to deepen but the timing is going to be a little bit off in some of the prior model runs, we had a little bit of a uh, more stronger, a little bit more ideal looking trough in this case. And we just don't really see that. As far as lift is concerned, it's not as impressive as what it once was either. So I really think that we're just mainly going to be dealing with a line of thunderstorms, probably strong to severe. Occasionally, we could see a tornado warning or two, along with a couple severe thunderstorm warnings here or there. I don't expect the full on outbreak from this, the way things look right now. But there are some things that need to be monitored in particular, especially considering that we're looking at this low level jet and it has a pretty solid has a pretty solid look to it in regards to the um, setup for Saturday here. And it really starts right around noon here. We see a decent little pocket of low level jet here getting up to about 40 plus knots, which is just about the minimum as to what you need here. But other factors are going to definitely be limiting that. It's not much going to be available in the way of surface heating here, which is going to kind of keep things down along with this uh, trough not being super robust here. Also is going to uh, decrease the amount of lift available. So we go ahead and take a look at some of the other parameters here, like the thermodynamics temperature. The surface temperature is going to be sufficient, but not impressive, not ideal for severe weather. I would personally want to see these temps a little bit warmer, but we're getting into the low to mid 60s in a lot of places, a little further to the south. We're getting into those 70s just a little bit here. But like I said, I really just don't think we're getting uh, everything to come together perfectly for a severe weather threat. Of course, this is pretty typical of uh, January setups here. The, more, the biggest factor that's kind of helping the severe weather threat is our moisture return here. And you can already see the moisture in place just as this model is even loading now as we speak. You can see the uh, 50 and 60 degree dew points really starting to kick in throughout the day today. And even though it starts to diminish at first, we do get a good return right around noon. And with this, regardless of whether we get severe weather or not, there will be some heavy downpours with this for sure. So as that frontal boundary moves in throughout the afternoon and into the evening, we're still going to be getting on and off periods of showers and thunderstorms throughout the southeast here as we go through the evening. And then as we get into the overnight hours, we'll watch this system clear out. But like I said, the main things that I think are going to inhibit it is the lack of uh, daytime heating or dineural heating, whichever one you want to call it, pretty much is the same thing. 
but one thing that's going to help inhibit that is the cloud cover cloud cover is going to be uh, pretty persistent throughout the next couple of days here so if we could have gotten some clearings like let's say if we could have gotten a couple of spots that were a little bit wider than this maybe we could have a little bit of a different story on our hands here but it just really looks like for the most part we're just gonna stay relatively warm but not super warm for this time of year like i said if we get clear if we were to ever get any uh break points in the clouds like this i would be a lot more concerned about that area of interest it could still happen but i find it highly unlikely at this point here so looking at the parameters here another inhibiting factor is a lack of instability the uh, kinematics aren't really impressive enough to help overcome this either lack of lift also kind of makes things a little bit more complicated here so if we were to look through all levels of the atmosphere in regards to cape here you just don't really see any super high values there's a couple of points over here that in particular towards the southeast that kind of pique my interest a bit for example this area over here hasn't really been talked about for severe weather here this is towards the uh, georgia south carolina line and there's a little bit of instability to work with, but I think kinematics here are going to be a lot more limited with this as well. Although this does have a decent look to it as far as the skew T and the hodiograph is concerned. Nonetheless, though, I still wouldn't really put too much merit into it. It's going to be uh, mainly just weak, not weak supercells at best. Maybe a couple of just uh, convective storms that pop up could get a quick little bit of spin out of this but i wouldn't expect anything crazy out of it at all and then of course if we look at this little indicator here that's li this is lift index normally you want something you want a negative integer that's greater than four so you want something like a negative six negative seven we're barely scraping the surface with that there but like i said still this is a point of interest and i wouldn't be surprised if we see an extension of this area maybe coming into play for severe weather tomorrow because as of right now if we actually take a look you don't even see a uh, severe risk with this at all not even a marginal so that's going to be an area that i'll be watching as well throughout the day tomorrow and then if we were to go and look at surface cape mainly the the uh, greatest area of instability is going to be here Typically with this type of setup, these are high shear, low cape events. And sometimes you can get a little something trying to pop. Sometimes you can get a little sneaky area like this to pop up here. If it meshed better with the uh, kinematics, I think we'd be talking a little bit differently here too. But here's another point of interest over here towards Alabama. And this is kind of what I was talking about here. If we look at this hodiograph here. We can see the linear nature of what is likely to be our thunderstorms here so like i said really not going to be too much going on here but there could be a couple of pockets where we see some increased activity here this will be right this looks like it's going to literally be right up against the front based off of what i'm seeing here based off the uh, skew t and also take notice of the fact that there's not really a whole lot of instability near the mix layer or the surface truthfully so as a whole here i think we're just really limited in the severe threat in general here at the moment I don't disagree with the slight risk but i do agree with them shrinking that slight risk from what they originally had about a couple of days earlier so if we were to go ahead and look at our shear here our zero to six kilometer there's not really a whole lot to work with here if we continue to go forward here you i mean you can see that we do get a little bit of an increase here but like i said not really too much going on here with the exception right up against that frontal boundary and then on top of that any uh prefrontal convection here if it doesn't get going if it turns out to be a messy convective mode will only limit things even more like i said it's really going to be more so just showers and thunderstorms with a couple of storms maybe pulsing severe for a minute here I wouldn't even be surprised or really dispute it personally if a uh, marginal risk got put in place of that slight risk. Although I will say Alabama still looks like the point of interest for sure at this point. So last thing to really do here is more or less look at the reflectivity. And the main thing that I've made note of at this point is we do end up getting a little bit of shower and storm activity as we get into the overnight hours here. But here's that first line that kind of captures my interest a little bit. And then it's in this sector here, this little clear slot as we get into the early afternoon where storms would refire. 
and this is where I'm still kind of like side eyeing a little bit. This is right in where that slight risk is, where we see those couple of discrete cells try to get that little bit of a supercellular look. I can't say that this is a, a, a guarantee or a shoe in for sure, but this could cause a little bit of trouble as we go through the evening tomorrow. But like I said, we'll have to take it one step at a time. Plenty of time between now and tomorrow morning for the model data to change here. So. Like I said, we'll just be keeping an eye on it here in the channel. And then of course, we'll probably be following up with a video in the morning regarding the upcoming winter threat that'll be existent for the Northeast. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like and a comment. Uh, definitely sub consider subscribing if you're new around here. And also if you could also hit that share button, that'd be awesome. That being said, it's been Tired Metalhead Weather, man. A little bit of a uh, change up here in the upload schedule today. We may uh, see how things go with this from this point forward here. But until then, take care, have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon.